Hello and welcome to the first episode of the InvoZone podcast. This is Nail Shabazz, the head of marketing at InvoZone, and I just call this episode number one. My SEO team is not going to be very happy with it. Anyways, so the agenda of this podcast is to talk about technology in businesses, businesses utilizing technology to expand, grow, and solve modern problems. And of course, I'm going to be talking some part of the podcast about the COVID-19 situation, the COVID economy. I know there's just too much of it on online, so offline as well. But I got to tell you something interesting. I mean, this is the bit I, I read recently. I was looking at the stats about the COVID situation. So back in 2020, last year, in Feb, March, when the situation actually started to get scary for everyone around the world, the number of uh, new businesses registering, it went down, obviously. I mean, that was expected. But then later, when the pandemic had reached its peak, right after the, I think it was like September, August, so the number of businesses registering, the new businesses, the number went up. I mean, th that was actually crazy. But that that also shows you that how adaptable we are. Because... Many companies have found different ways to grow and offer products. For example, um, there's a company called Clear that's like an airport clearance system. So previously, at the beginning of the in the beginning of the pandemic, so what they did was they offered an e-passport, which would have um, some sort of a validation that the person was not COVID positive or COVID negative, however you wanna, um, whatever <laughs> makes you comfortable. So they would just walk through the airport for travel. I mean, the travel industry is not doing well. I mean, that's a separate story. But as far as airport security was concerned, this was their idea. And now they're offering um, vaccination tracking app with their their core businesses. So that, that's just another way to show you um, people riding the wave. Well, that's not a very nice way to put it. But then what can you do about it? You still have to innovate um talking about the industry so i have to mention a few things um travel industry is not doing well i mean that's obvious but then the industries that are actually offering a lot of opportunities are e-commerce health healthcare or health tech and fintech and i say this like from personal experience we get um approached and get a lot of requests for businesses asking to develop app or website and whatnot so most of them they are looking to venture out in these specific industries and for obvious reasons but you know there's another thing i wanted to mention there's a report by mckenzie and they say that just having an app having an online presence is not going to solve anything i mean those days are gone when you just have to have your app or website up there and you're good to go that's not the case anymore. So you have to be very specific, very strategic, and actually perhaps tactical because planning ahead, years ahead, is probably not possible these days. You have to plan ahead for like months or sometimes even weeks. So for example, the government announces specific SOP. So are you going to open a restaurant or not? When are you going to open it? What will be the timings? And do you have enough space outside if it's an obligation? Get it? So, tactics. Strategy is still there, obviously, but then I think the more focus is on tactics. Well, I might be wrong, but that is just my observation. Oh, hey, I also wanted to talk about hyper-digitization, this work-from-home culture. So, it's not going away anywhere. And I'm getting used to it. So I'm the kind of person who loves being in the office because I have worked most of my life freelance. So I'm just kind of bored, like sick of it. So I really wanted getting into the, the office vibe of it. The whiteboard and brainstorming sessions and all the politics. But honestly, now I'm getting comfortable in this mix, this hybrid model of office and work from home. Now, the cool thing is I can call my team almost any day of the week. So coming back to the, the debate about um, strategy versus tactics, do let me know what you think. Before I go, I, I want to talk about one small case study um, from China, Pinduoduo, that's the name. 
probably you might have heard about it. Um, I, I really want to mention this name because when people think about going out in um, opening an e-commerce store or something very generic, so they think that the market is already saturated or there are big players. I'm pretty sure wherever you're listening to this, each country has their own giant company in e-commerce. So beating that is probably impossible. So that's a general perception. But Pinduoduo, they it 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 broke the the duopoly. I mean, I was gonna go for hegemony. That's a duopoly of um, uh, Alibaba and JD.com. What they did was they focused more on social selling. So social shopping or social commerce. And for, for those who don't know Pinduoduo, think of it as a, a mashup or a blend of Amazon and Groupon. Groupon is a platform that encourages group buying. And the incentive or the bonus they give is based on luxury items or wants. So for example, if you are successful in group buying, the incentive for you would be a massage coupon. So you get free massage or something. Pinduoduo, okay, I'm going to stop naming this weird, strange-sounding name. PDD, that's a stock symbol. I, I hope I'm not wrong. So they give you incentives of the actual item itself. So, for example, you are supposed to collect a group of 20 people buying milk cartons or grocery items. So the person who actually initiates this purchase, they get that item for free. Now, th this has a dual effect so the person has the incentive to go and um, get the the item for free they save money and what the platform the PDD get in return is the viral effect so PDD also collaborated with WeChat which is WhatsApp for China so it became easier for anyone who wanted to collect like 20 people to complete that group so they could go and um, order that item so this is just one example of a successful business venture against the very dominating forces of alibaba and jd.com so wherever your business is uh, wherever you want to take your business pretty sure if you can figure out the market if you can find those loopholes or um, pain points and aspects where others haven't reached yet maybe you need to look out for that um, so you know I mentioned this because people or businesses don't just come to us for to get services you know when in, they talk about technology oh we need this stack or, or we need this developer so after that they also talk about the business strategy or the marketing aspects of it um, they also get our opinion on it um, and this is what actually happens when businesses actually finally reach out to us it's mostly after they've exhausted all their options. So they come to us in a pretty bad shape. I mean, had they come to us earlier, um, we were, we were, we're generally better able to, we would have been generally better able to help them. But that's how things are. It just goes back to the same debate about of uh, outsourcing versus in-house thing. Anyways, I just wanted to mention the, the rapid digitization. I started my podcast with this and... This is what has happened. This is true. So in back in 2020, we were barely 50 at Amazon. And I used to talk with the CEO, Fulkan, uh, about um, where the company's headed, what are the plans, and you know the products and pipeline. And he used to tell me that probably by the end of 2021, we're going to reach 200 people because we're looking at like you know expansion and growth. We have already reached 200. It was unexpected, but when you're getting so many requests for services, you just cannot put them down. You're not going to say no to business coming in. And of course, we want to expand. So this just goes out to show you that still there is plenty of opportunity out there, even in the pandemic. Um, so you just need to pay attention and I guess be more tactical. Well, you're going to tell me that strategy versus tactic in the comment section. Anyways, it was fun recording the first episode and I will be more than happy to record the second episode. Until next time, take care, everyone. This is Nal Shabazz signing off.